Is everyone else ready? That's the real question. Um, that was awesome. Brandon was awesome. Um, thank everybody for coming. Yeah. Thank you all. This is awesome. Look at all these screens we got. Um, so I'm going to teach you about Max MSP, which is a software that you can build your own patches on. Um, so I'm just going to see how this goes. If raise your hand. It's dark. I can't really see any hands, but you can like stand up if you have a question or something. Um, cool. So we're talking about Max MSP, um, and I'm going to show you how to make a video effects patch on there. Which I don't know if this will make sense now, but you don't actually have to own the prescription, the subscription to um, record video effects off of there. So I can get to that later. Um, so MSP stands for Max Signal Processing. So I'm going to read you some little definitions just to get started to maybe kind of like ground you in what you're about to learn. Um, so I'm going to start with signal processing. Digital signal, signal processing is the use of digital processing, such as by computers or more specialized digital signal processors to perform a wide variety of signal processing operations. The digital signals processed in this manner are a sequence of numbers that represent samples of a continuous variable in a domain such as time, space, or frequency. It's just a lot of words, but thanks for Wikipedia for that. And then I'm going to put the definition of a signal chain, which is just a signal, which is the event, phenomenon, or electrical quantity that conveys information from one point to another. And then chain is any series of items linked together to pertaining to a routine consisting of segments, which are run through the computer in tandem, only one segment being within the computer at any one time, and each segment using the output from previous program as its input. Sometimes words aren't for people, but if you make music, you're probably pretty familiar with the signal chain for your pedals and your guitar. So, I mean, you can look at that for a second. It's just something off the Google. Um, but let's apply that to video. So what I'm going to teach you now is how to build a patch on Max MSP. So anyone let me know if I'm going too fast or um, want anything else explained, but basically we're going to start with the idea that we have a video input, we have something affecting it, and we have an output. So then, as um, Violet showed you earlier with the physical video mixer, you can build your own mixing patch on Max MSP. So in this image we have three different video inputs as they go through effects, going into a video mixer, going to the one video output, and this is just a simplified version of what this is. Um, this is a, a patch that I built on Max, and right now all of the effects are off. So there is one, um, one channel video going in the input on the top left, and on the top there's three different effects, and all of those are going into different channels. So basically I was processing the same video with three different effects, um, and being able to affect the percentage of the output video, which is um, this. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate some stuff um, so you can kind of see how these patches work and how you can build a patch. It seems kind of complicated, but it is doable on your own at home, and there's so many YouTube videos. Um, so I'm going to show you... I have, it's hard to know which way it goes, okay, oh, I might just share my screen, um, let's see, so you can start off with a video like this. <laughs> You got this, you got some DJ kitties. Um, and then what you can do with that, don't mind my computer organization. Um, and then, so this is DJ kitties with effects. So in a couple minutes, maybe you'll understand how to make something like this. Maybe not, but we'll at least try. Um, so this is a video going through the three different effects being processed into one output channel. And I'm going to show you 
the patch I already built, and then I'm going to build a patch for you, because I think that's the easiest way to kind of understand how things are working. Um, but it's pretty cool. There's like, so, so basically, um, on Max MSP, you can build like a lot of, it's mostly for audio software, if anyone's familiar with it, but um, someone taught me how to use the video component, and like I said, like, you don't have to have the subscription to use the Vizzy or the video component, and you just can't save patches, but if you have patches already saved, you can use it for free, and um, you can't, you, you have to use the video recorder, not the audio video, because to use any of the audio parts of Max, you need to have the subscription, so if anyone wants that more explained, I can in a moment. Um, I think maybe, I'll just start with the patch that I built. Um, so this one has one video channel and the other one has two, so I'm gonna kind of show both just to kind of give a, um, so right now I'm turning off, on the yellow is all the effects. So the, the first top in here is the input, and then this is the output. This is where you can see the output coming from the video mixer, and then right here is the recorder. So you want recorder, not AV recorder, if you don't have the subscription. Um, and so I'm gonna drop, let's see, I have some videos that I can edit. Um, let's see, I love driving footage. So I'm gonna turn everything off. And right now, because all the percentages are low, it's not coming in all the way, so I'm gonna put everything up at 100. So right now, we have it all at 100, and then I'm gonna turn this tessellator on and I could turn the percentage down of the other mixes, so the tessellator is coming in more. So right now I have channel three with the tessellator, and you know, I honestly, subconsciously might know what's going on, but a lot of times I'm just messing around with the software and just kind of like, um, kind of seeing what it, what it does. It's kind of just amazing. It, you can get a lot of like analog video effects. Also you can build, video synthesis patches on here, which is far more complicated than I understand yet, but there's YouTube for that. Um, but yeah, so basically you can, what I, why I like this patch is because there's the multiple like levels of it coming in. So like I have the ability to put the raw footage in, so it's not just um, the process video, so you're able to see all of the above. So right now everything's up at 100, I'm gonna turn down I'm gonna turn down, the only effect on is the kaleidoscope. So I'm gonna turn that down a little bit and then I can turn the pixelator on so maybe you can see that. And if I turn the collider on, you can see it a little better. I could turn down the other effects. Um, and basically you can get a like external piece of gear to uh, affect these knobs and stuff. I haven't gotten that far yet, but I feel like it'd be really cool to like sync this patch up to some um, exterior gear so you, you don't have to like click really small, like sometimes it's just like those little knobs are really tiny and it'd be nice to have physical knobs. Um, but yeah, basically, yeah, I can just press record and so now I'm recording whatever I'm making, which is pretty cool. And if you know me, I edit everything on iMovie, which is awesome because it's pretty simple, but you can get really crazy stuff from here and throw it into iMovie, put the saturation up and it's just like, it looks like video synthesis, so. Um, now's a good time, maybe I could ask any questions to kind of catch anyone up if anyone's kind of confused. You, I see you, yes, you. Uh, uh, you're saying I could sync up the dials with like an external piece of gear, right? I'm pretty sure, you, I haven't tried this yet, but I'm pretty sure you could get either like a MIDI gear or like something with knob, like there's probably a lot of different external pieces of gear, like whatever you build your patch to, that you could have a physical piece of gear doing it, so like I could not be using the computer, I could have this all running, but I could be controlling all of it from an external piece of gear, not like a keyboard. But you can also program your keyboard to be affected. So like, I could make some of these keys affect the knobs. So you could like have certain keys cue things on and off. Um, so yeah, there's ways to interact with the software and make it like more hands-on than just like clicking really small knobs. 
Any other questions? Okay. Oh, what's up? When you uh, when you um, when you the recording. Uh huh. Yeah, so I actually forgot I was recording, and that's why my computer's getting really warm, so I basically just recorded all that, and so now I have all that, and it's basically the same revs, like, it's, oh, um, yeah, so I have all that just recorded now, throw that into some editing, and then, I don't know, it's done, um, I'm gonna show you the other patch, and then maybe I can build a patch, and if anyone has any like video effects they want to see on it, they can put some requests in. Um, maybe now's a good moment I can like show you some content I made with it to um, just get a little feel. So these are a bunch of stills from, I made a music video for my friend Woody a year or so, I don't know when time is, but um, these are all really cool. I like edit this with iMovie, but I just basically made a bunch of stuff, like party footage and like nature footage and just ran it and like put a bunch of frames in frames and it's really stropey and fun. And basically even for like stills, you can make really incredible imagery with the software. Um, pretty great. So, oh, that one's cool. And yeah, so... I'm gonna open another patch, and then I'm gonna build a patch, because I think that would actually leave you with the ability to try building a patch on your own and like troubleshooting that. Okay, so this one has two video inputs. I feel like that's kind of helpful to see a little bit more of what's going on. And so right now I have it locked, so like right now, which is good when you're running a patch to have it locked in this corner right here because right now I can't move any of these things, but if I was like trying to run a patch and it wasn't locked and I was just like clicking things, everything would just start moving or I'd like add new things. So I'm gonna, I just have it locked, but now I'm gonna unlock it because I wanna make the screen bigger. Cool. So I'm just gonna explain this, but we have two video inputs right here. They're each going through their own separate effects and then the first video and its effect is running into the mixer, channel one, and then the second one is running into channel two. Here I can control the things, and then the output of this is going into the viewer right here, and also into the recorder. So you don't necessarily, if you're just doing live visuals, um, and you're not recording it, you can also, like, I could have the setting in my computer be where I have this running, and then there's, like how I had it earlier, like the second monitor, like I can, I can also, maybe I'll, I'll show that like, where I can have the, it running from here, but the viewer isn't seeing this. But yeah, I'm gonna run some video in here so we can see this running, and then I'm gonna build a patch. Um, I downloaded a YouTube, the, the iPod ad, because I'm like, why not? It's gonna do some delay. I love ripping things off YouTube. And now I have like, a milk ad. Um, I love ads and things and art. So then like, oh, so it's pretty cool. You can like, you can do a lot. So right now they're running both at 100, which is, I guess they're both pretty saturated in there. Um, and then I turn off both the effects, but now, oh, so I got the fractalizer going on the milk. And the fractalizer's got like, I don't know. It's just, it sounds like a funny sentence, but I definitely do have the fractalizer on the milk, and then I got the delay on the, um, on the iPod ad, which we all probably remember, hopefully we all remember. Um, let's see. And yeah, so basically, like, I'm just running it through that, and that's like, you could also mess around with the speed of the video up here, so you could stop it, um, play it, you could pause it, so then it's like, like that same thing about like the the video mixer where it has like a freeze frame thing and I feel like the delay looks pretty cool. I'm gonna turn the fractalizer off so you can see a little bit more of what's going on. Um, but yeah, I could slow down some of the video. I could just slow them both down really slow and um, they're moving pretty slow. And then get the fractalizer back on. 
And yeah, so basically you can turn it on and off on the top and then each little effects patch has like different ways to affect it. So maybe I'll turn off the first one so you can see the fractalizer a little bit. So there's just like, right, you can add like a tint so it's all kind of different colors or you can have it all just the same. And so the fractalizer like basically just, oh, the video's over. Um, there we go, we got the milk back. And then the fractalizer is a thing to kind of do a bunch of squares. I don't know, I feel like it's pretty cool. I feel like this is something you can experiment and learn with. The type of way I make art is just like, kind of just experimenting and then making something with that. Um, but I feel like now's a good time to just build a patch. So I'm gonna X out of this. I'm not gonna save this. And I'm gonna go to new patcher. And so right now I have this blank canvas. And so for the video stuff, we're gonna go down to Vizzy. And Vizzy is the plugin that was added to Max MSP for video stuff. And I'm gonna start with an input, which would be just the player. Um, I can maybe, it hasn't been working, but I could put the grabber on and then it would be on my webcam, but for some reason it hasn't been working, so can't watch me. Okay, so I'm gonna put two video inputs. Now we have two different video inputs like before, and then does anyone have any uh, effects requests? If you can read that up there, let's see. So there's, there's effect, generate, and transform, and those are all things that you can do to change the video, and basically a lot of these things are things that are on classic video mixers, but um, you have a little bit more like computer control, and one of the things too you can do is run music into this sequence, so it's like in the same way like the music is affecting the synth, you can have the music synthesize and control the effects. I don't think I have time to explain that, and I don't even know if I understand that well enough to explain it. But I'm gonna add a kaleidoscoper, that's my favorite, pretty classic. Um, gonna scramble, or we wanna scramble? Okay. You know, I can put, I can put, I'm gonna put two effects each, why not? Okay, any other effects requests? Let's see. Um, let's put the, what's scratcher? What's the scratch, scratcher? Scratcher, you said? Stretcher, strip, stretcher, warp a video. And there's like little extra explanations below. So that's pretty helpful. So like sometimes they're like, what the hell does that mean? Sorry. Yeah, what, is, what does that mean? What? Oh, we want the fractalizer? Okay, I'll bring that, we like the fractalizer. Honestly, I, you know what? I think the tessellator is really cool too. You know what? I'm gonna put three different videos. Why not, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the percolator. <laughs> I wish. Um, so, I usually use two hands on a computer, but um, whatever. Um, okay, so I'm gonna squish these all a bit closer so we can fit a lot of stuff into this patch. Uh, maybe now is a good time for questions. I'm not looking up, but you can just steal a question at me if you want. You don't even have to raise your hand. <laughs> Oh, the guest mic? The, the desk oh, mic. Oh, the desk mic? I think I'm fine. Oh, like the stand, the mic stand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so someone asked for, I'm gonna have the tessellator, that's, that's, the, that's one of the good ones. And so what I'm gonna do is, so on the bottom is a video output right here. And then so I'm gonna put that into the video input on the top. And then right here, I'm gonna put the video output into the video input here. And then I also need to add a mixer, which is in the mix composite section. And I'm gonna put a four part mixer in. So then I'm gonna take the output from the second effects. And then I'm gonna do the same with the second one. So we can have a lot of things happening. Okay, so I'm gonna have an output and I'm putting a viewer. The projector actually is good because the projector is like what I can use if I wanted to, I'll show you in a second, put it as up here while this is down here. 
Um, so I need to take the video output into the projector. This is like cool software because it's like on a Mac, it's pretty user friendly. You can just drag and drop. And so now I'm going to lock that as I showed before so I don't have to drag anything around. And I'll go back to my folder that I made for this presentation, which is. Um, so I have. Oh, I have Virtual Nightclub, which is like a really cool. Um, Ooh, we got the kaleidoscope on the stretcher. So that has no effects right now. I'm gonna grab some other stuff. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna bring back that the Apple ad. So I'm gonna pull up. Oh. And then I'm going to pull up I love car footage. So I'm gonna bring back the car footage. So right now we got a lot coming into this mix, but um, it looks pretty cool, and what I was saying before too is like we have the floating window for. Um, here we go. Oh, here we go. Um, okay, so I have this running, and right now I have all the effects off, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the the mix three up, and then I'm gonna turn the tessellator on, and we got some driving car footage getting moving, and that's a little bit more strong than the other. I'm gonna turn the nightclub footage down, or maybe I'll put the kaleidoscope on it, um, and then that one has like some color modes that you can change on it. So it's like a lot of times it inverts it, or it, like the ways that it relates to these videos you can affect, and then. Um, yeah, and then so I'm going to turn the second one on a little bit more. Turn down the mix one and put the sc scrambler. Someone asked for the scrambler. Maybe you can see it better if the other stuff is down. So we got the scrambler on. Sometimes things don't really do that much. Got the kaleidoscope. That's why I like the kaleidoscope. It's always doing something. Um, so that's just the Apple footage running through the kaleidoscoper, and then I really like the Tessellator is a new one I found recently, and that's the bottom one I have running right now, and that one's got a lot of like um, shapes, and I don't really, um, I feel like each, pat each effects patch is like really different, and um, you can just do so much with it, it's pretty cool. And I was gonna show like, I can go to system preferences and I can, oh, hopefully I don't bring anything embarrassing, oh, about my computer, <laughs> okay, wait, <laughs> forgot what I was doing, um, so then displays and then I can turn it where I'm not mirroring and then I can, where is the, for some reason, for some reason the projector is not, Working, let's see. Oh, there it is. Okay. So then I can put this over here. It's, it's not showing right now. Okay, I don't know where. Sorry. A full screen going while you are working on it here. And I don't know, does anyone have any more questions? I'm like, I don't know if that was helpful, but um, yeah, I need more questions. Uh, good question. Uh, can you, I saw you use like the grabber. Uh huh. So did that work with any kind of video input? So like, if you somehow connect like your 
Yeah. So in the grabber, that's basically grabbing footage from somewhere, and so the default is the webcam, and I don't know, I need to like troubleshoot it why my webcam's not working, but you can, I don't know about iPhone, I don't have a flip phone, so I can't answer that, but you can use the grabber, if I had like a camera plugged in through the USB, I could grab the footage from that. So you, in the same way that you can grab footage live with the camera, you can do that into the computer. Um, yeah, does that answer the question? Yeah, what's up? Uh, how heavy is it on my computer? Yeah. Like, I guess, like, ability to run it, I guess. Um, that's a really good question. Right now, I, like, don't really have money, so like, my, I have so much video files on here, I don't really have many, um, I don't want really to have, like, I don't have Adobe Creative Suite, because I just like to, like, fuck around with, like, the preview and the iMovie and make art with that, but I think that, you know, I could literally see how much, let's see, Max takes up uh, get info. Let's see. It takes up three gigs. That's kind of for some people that might be a lot. Um, or wait, yeah, I think it's about three gigs. But I feel like there is a lot of information in it. Um, I wish I knew more about how much space it takes up on the computer because that's a really good question. But um, I'm just using it for video and I don't make many patches, but I think that when you get more complicated into sound stuff that it can probably take up a lot more, but it's it's worth it. Um, and it's pretty classic and it's like kind of, you build from your own stuff, so I think that's what's really cool is that everything that's, it's like a software that basically like, I can program, like what I, my next goal with this is to put this in with a, um, a motion sensor and create a space where all the video f is affected by bodies moving through the space. So having like multiple monitors and then like as a body moves through the space, it like affects how much the videos are being affected. And that's something you can build in a max patch. Like I said, max is usually used for audio stuff. And um, I just somehow was taught how to, I don't even know how to use audio stuff really. Like I was just taught how to create video effects um, through the, like I said in the corner, it's called, it's called Vizzy. Um, so right here's the V. Um, I don't know what beep is, but it's like, basically someone built a patch plugin that's like for video stuff, which is really cool. Um, is there any more questions, anybody? Um, well, I hope that made sense. I feel like maybe I can just show something I made with it and then um, I'm gonna call this Rotunda. Can like show a couple things I made with it just as like a fun little share. Um, oh, I guess maybe I should stop soon because we have another really great performance coming up. So I'm just gonna show this one last thing. So basically it's just some stuff going on in the kaleidoscoper, pretty cool, just um, I don't know, there's just so much you can do with it. I feel like if you have a more precise method, you can like, um, you can kind of go in with an intention, but like I said, like I, this is something I made for Vox recently, which is like roller coaster, roller coaster footage going through a bunch of stuff, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I really, I recommend the software, especially if you don't have the capability to have a bunch of physical gear, because that stuff can be really expensive, but, um, yeah, I'm gonna put my email up here so you can take a picture if you have any questions or you wanna learn any more, or like collaborate or, I don't know, send some hate mail or whatever. Um, yeah, but I'm Florence, that's my email. And this is a really cool event that I like to thank everybody who participated in just throwing this and showing up to this. So thank you all for being here.